first story involves a uh, war profiteer, Northrop Grumman, uh, who is falsely accused CIA whistleblower John Kiriakou of revenge porn. Um, and the chaos that has ensued in, uh, in John Kiriakou's life. Uh, John Kiriakou, for, for those of you that might not be in the know about who he is, uh, I would highly recommend you get to know who John is. Um, John is a CIA whistleblower. He uh, went to prison for, for blowing the whistle uh, on, uh, on, on unconstitutional spying and things of that sort. Uh, he ha is the host of uh, Loud and Clear on Sputnik Radio, a program that I I normally would listen to when I was on the road. I haven't particularly been listening to it all that much because it's hard to, for me, this is a personal thing for me, it's hard to uh, digest like audio only content. Um, like I have Lee Camp and Graham Elwood's new podcast. Uh, they put out an episode of it and uh, I am like dragging my feet on getting through it. I think I've gotten through like half of it in two listens. Uh, Eleanor Goldfield does another audio podcast called Act Out that she releases every two weeks. And even that I'm behind on. It's Audio content is just really difficult for me to, um, to absorb when, I am, uh, when I'm sitting at the computer most of the time. And when I go on my walks and when I go and do like workout stuff, like I, listening to music gets me more amped up. So it's still difficult for me to do that. Um, and what, what I really should do is start listening to them again on my drives. Like I go on drives once or twice a week, uh, just to like do that. So maybe I'll start doing that again. Uh, but it's just been really difficult, but I used to listen to loud and clear all the time. And, um, uh, he also writes for consortium news. And I've gone through some of the stuff that John has written for consortium news. Uh, we talked about the crazy laws that are still in place uh, in the United States for whatever fucking reason, right? Uh, so uh, John's going, you know, through through a divorce, and that's an unfortunate thing for, uh, for to go to. It's a difficult process depending on uh, what state you're in and the mental, physical states of both parties involved. And, you know, it's not a fun process to go through. But basically, um, he went to... Uh, Northrop Grumman, where his ex-wife works, and uh, brought up um, the fact that she was misappropriating funds to the ethics department at Northrop Grumman, just which is like something that you know, yeah, okay, somebody's misappropriating funds, um, and it involved her uh, infidelity with you know the and things of that sort, and uh, he he basically said you guys should investigate this, and that's the right thing to do. Um, and you know, like he didn't do anything illegal in that front. He didn't do anything crazy or over the top in that front. He did the right thing. And so of course the ethics department went straight to his ex-wife, told her about it and things got crazier from there where, where then, um, Northrop Grubin essentially filed charges against him. Um, and his ex-wife was involved as well, uh, claiming that, you know, he is trying to, he's trying to use revenge porn as a, as a, as a means to, um, to get his way in, in, so to speak. Right. Uh, and which is crazy. It's crazy. Like uh, going up and saying, Hey, these funds were misappropriated. Um, and it, and it has to do with, you know, uh, these, these unfortunate divorce proceedings that, that I'm going through. Um, and then for them to come out and say, Oh, we're going to charge you with this felony crime. Um, with absolutely no proof because there is no proof coming out and saying that here's some financial shit. Uh, so here's what the complaint said. So let's go to the complaint. The complaint says right here, I'll highlight it. It says, according to the complaint, Heather was allegedly involved in an affair with a Northrop Executive John contacted Northrop's ethics department in July of 2018 to inform them that he possessed documents showing Heather, a director of global business development and Northrop Grumman, an executive and, and an executive, fraudulently billed the company for business travel. However, they were engaged in tens of thousands of dollars of personal travel that involved cheating on them. So that's what the complaint said, right? And it's basically like what he's talking about is 
It's like Excel spreadsheets. Like Excel spreadsheets are not porn. I'm sure that's like somebody's kink out there. Maybe. Maybe somebody is just like, boy, those spreadsheets really get me rock hard or whatever. Like that's that I'm not here to kink shame anything, but like it in in most cases, something like that is not like pornographic material. Like possessed documents could literally be like receipts and credit card bills or so on and so forth, like stuff like financial reports and things of that sort. It's not revenge porn. So Northrop Grumman uh, hired a detective, and uh, and and they came in to basically search John's home illegally, violating the Fourth Amendment because they had no rhyme or reason to actually go about fucking doing this. And uh, they, they searched his home without any real proof of revenge porn, going over the, the notions of possessed documents, right? Like, what, like, they used that vague term, and they basically said, oh, he's trying to leverage and blackmail this person, which is not true. He's essentially pointing out um, internal fraud within their company. You're like a multi-billion dollar company and there's internal fraud with two higher ups in your company, two executives in your company. Um, and, you know, in terms of being a fucking company, that would should be something that concerns you. Uh, there, I mean, they, there was none. They found like a bikini photo or some shit that she sent to the Northrop executive. And like that doesn't constitute as anything. You know, like so... It, none of this is uh, is really applicable, but here's the thing: Northrop Grumman has a history of attacking whistleblowers. They do that shit all the time. They falsely accuse people, and then they settle out of court, and they basically say that the whistleblower doesn't can't can't say or do anything. Right? That's just sort of like a thing that they do. Um, these false accusations uh, essentially took John's kids away from him, which is so fucked up. And they also took his Vespa, which is like, uh, can you, can, can we do, can, can you just keep the Vespa and give the guy's kids, like, like, take the fucking Vespa. Who gives, it's a Vespa. It'll be fine. But can, can you let the guy have his children? Like, that's, can that be, can that be a thing? Like, can you guys not be a total fucking dick about this? So now, um, you know, John is seeking damages for emotional duress um and i hope i hope that he wins uh because this is bullshit and like this is essentially a war profiteering company uh using their massive wealth to go after a a writer a uh commentator on foreign policy and the intelligence community with his radio show with his independently funded radio show by the way it's not like on fucking npr or cnn or any of those other fucking networks it's an independent radio show. And they and they're and they're like excited about going after these people. This is this is who these war profiteers are. This is who funds are like whenever people come out and say that they're anti war, this is who we're fucking against. We're against people like this. People like Northrop Grumman. Not veterans like we're pro-veteran because we're like hey maybe fucking help out the people that went to war and fought rich people's wars maybe you should fucking help them out this is who you should be against by the way there is no uh, to me there is no possible way for anybody to justifiably make an argument uh on behalf of northrop Grumman. there just isn't <laughs> All of the evidence points to the fact that they fucked over John Kiriakou for no, for no reason other than the fact that he is a CIA whistleblower. He uh, talks about foreign policy and the intelligence community quite often, and he writes about it. And this is how they're coming after him. This is how they're going to try to punish him. And this is, this is a tactic that's been used before. We saw this with you know Black Panthers, MLK, Malcolm X, all these like the FBI and the intelligence community always goes after them. They always go after the families. They always try to find this thing and where they where they come out and like with King they like found letters uh, with his uh, with his like former 
uh, you know, because he had infidelity. Like, he cheated on his wife, too. And, and and they were like, oh, you're fucking done, blah, blah, blah. And they would threaten him and shit like that. Uh, and they were, like, sending letters between Eldridge Cleaver and Huey Newton, which are for the Black Panthers. And, like, this is what they do. They, they sow this sort of divide. And then they hang you up in legal fees, which, which is what they did with the Panthers, too. Um, I did a whole video about it that, that's on the YouTube channel that kind of outlines the history of, of the Black Panthers and how the intelligence community really fucked them over. But this is a typical thing that they do. So when people sit there and, like, justify the intelligence community and, like, glorify them for what they are, it's like you're glorifying people that went after grassroots movements, that are going after independent people speaking out against government atrocities. That's that's who you want to fucking support? That's fucking bananas to me. That's fucking bananas to me. What is going on, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure that you hit that like button, hit that share button, and make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and are, uh, hit that bell notification icon to, to make sure you get notified. Whenever I put out a new video, I put out anywhere between three to like six videos a week. Um, and I'm putting out content pretty regularly uh, from uh, deep dives on history and sociology, philosophy, and, and things of that sort, which is Forkful of Noodles, the more ranty videos like this one called Road Reflections, and more news-oriented ones uh, called uh, The Dispatch. I'm also going to be putting up uh, some uh, choice segments from uh, in my interviews from Taboo Table Talk as well. So there's going to be a ton of stuff coming out on this channel that I think you guys would be very interested in and would enjoy very much, especially if you like this video that you just watched. Uh, so make sure you hit the like, make sure you hit the share, make sure you subscribe. You can follow me on all of the social medias at Krish Mohan Ha Ha. Uh, and uh, if you want to come uh, see me perform live uh, in a virtual setting, in a virtual theater, uh, so to speak, I've got some uh, I've got some live stand up comedy shows that I'm doing every single week, every single Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, they're called the Citizen Revolution. Uh, and the Citizen Revolution, each week I take on a brand new topic, a brand new subject, uh, and, uh, and we do a deep dive on that. We also talk about some current event stuff. We also t make fun of some people's tweets. Uh, we, we, we look at some older videos and do breakdowns of, of, of media segments as well. So we do a bunch of stuff on the show. Uh, they're usually 90 minutes. We do a discussion at the end. It's super, super fun. Tickets are available right now. You can get them in the description of this video. Uh, and half of the ticket sales go to helping a, a new grassroots organization every single week. A grassroots organization, journalist, uh, uh, activist group, and so on and so forth. So once again, uh, that is all available. And you can become a sustaining member. And sustaining members get free tickets to those shows. So all of that stuff is available on my website. That's krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Uh, I hope you guys can make it to one of these. I hope you guys consider donating. I hope you guys consider becoming a sustaining member if you have the capacity to do so. Uh, but all of my stuff is free and available for everybody to enjoy. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, and there is more to come. But till then, we'll see you on the road.